Hi, I am Seamless, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for a new FL12 Basics tutorial. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about automation, how to automate stuff inside FL, including how to automate third-party stuff. So, uh, I've got a, I got a Citrus here, and I'm going to load up a simple saw wave, put it in a filter, and now I want to automate the filter. So there's a couple ways that you can go about this. The main way, which is the way that I will typically just about always do it, if I have a note somewhere. There we go, notes. You can right click it, create automation clip. That's pretty much it. You might have noticed that when I did that, it made this weird, awkward, not at all under what I was doing, just kind of weird shape. And you can just fix this by just grabbing a thing and moving a thing, and then that's the end of it. Or when you're making the animation clip, you can select the specific time period in which the thing exists that you want to make the clip for. And then when you make the clip, it'll just put it in there. You might have noticed that even though I already had a clip in there, it actually let me make another one. And that's because you can make as many clips for one particular controller as you want. So that means you can have more than one clip per, con per control, but what if you wanted to have more than one control per clip? Like, say, for some reason, I want this also in filter 2. Well, you do this is that you right click the control that you want, and you go to link the controller, and then you go to the internal controllers list to bring it down, and you'll see whatever automation clips that you have or other control types, and we'll show you how that works. Now, uh, the way that this list is chronological, so the newest clip will always be the last one in the list. So that means that the one that is in here, I know was made last, so I know that this one is the one that was last. You have this remove conflicts button, which if you have it engaged, it means it will actually remove the other controllers that are listed by, but, but by default it's off. So, ta-da. And now we've got two filters. Hooray! So that's automation clips. There are more ways to automate things than just using automation clips. For most uh, plugins, there's usually some kind of internal modulation type, usually some kind of LFO thing, but actually we can externally automate things with LFOs with stuff that generates LFOs. For example, there's the uh, peak controller. Where the heck did they put it? I don't know where it is, but I can find it here. Peak controller is here. The peak controller can actually output an LFO. There it is. Nice LFO. Now, remember what we were talking about with um, the controller linking in post. I can take a, I can take a controller like this, link the controller, and then ah, we'll see the whole peak controller thing list exists here. And right, we want LFO. And now the thing will move forever. And because it's in the same controller slot, you might have noticed that it's muted. And now it's being automated. Which makes that sound weird. Pretty neat. In terms of other LFO stuff, we actually don't need to use just the uh, external LFOs as well. We can even use LFOs inside automation clips themselves. If you go to the channel settings window, you can even turn it on and just go to LFO, and then now it's an LFO. What we're hearing there is that it's actually still uh, processing the automation that we have present here. So if we get rid of all that, which I'm doing the slow way, I'll explain how to do the fast way in a second after I've done it the slow way just to be annoying. The, the slat, the slow way was what I was doing there, but if you notice here, these three buttons, which I didn't talk about during the playlist video, these are different functions that are specific for each of the special kinds of clips that are available. There's pattern clips, automation clips, and audio clips, which I haven't talked about yet. In the automation clips, there's two options. We have the slide mode. Slide mode means that when you put a note down normally, a note, a little node down normally, 
it just moves in between the two nodes that they're, they're next to, and that's pretty much the end of that. But if it's side mode on, it'll move the ensuing notes down. It's still calling them notes. And like that, which could be cool or cannot be cool. Step mode sort of allows you to draw them in manually. If you get rid of snap, by holding down alt or just getting rid of snap, it'll actually let you do that stuff like that. But you see there's actually a little bit of auto interpolation there to, cons to uh, con conserve how many spaces there are. But if you right click, it gets rid of them all immediately. So that can be handy. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with uh, LFOs there. Including that weirdness that I just did there. Indeed. However, I do enjoy a good regular automation as well. For probably 99% of your automation needs, an automation clip will probably be just fine. There are a lot of other ways to do it, including the ways that you can do when you want to actually record something, like if you have a, a MIDI controller with knobs and stuff like that, but that will be different, and that'll be uh, its own special video. So let's talk about how to record third-party stuff, or rather automate third-party stuff, like Massive. Hi, Massive. So let's say I want to be dank, and I want to use modern talking. How do I automate the wavetail position? Well, let's put down a note. Let's put down a time that we want to be in. Do -do 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 -do. And here we go. We've got our two notes. Now, we can't right click on third party stuff without the third party thing happening. So that means that what we need to do is we need to wiggle the note. Wee -do 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 -do. Go to tools, last tweaked. Create automation clip. And then there it is. And that basically did it just as if we had done it with the right clicking. And that's really all there is to that. This isn't really a very complicated concept. Automation is probably the one of the easier concepts to grasp. Although this is the first time that we're going to talk about what is in FL considered to be the FL Studio's line editor. The way that the graph works, because this is a graph, this is position over time, position being the X value and time being the Y value, is that we are able to make the lines in the graph. And then we in here we have the same control over the lines as we do with any other line editor inside FL, which means that we can control the line type by right clicking on the point, there's also delete, and there's a whole bunch of other options, including the copy values, which is a fun thing to be doing. Like for example, if you need to have the same value someplace else, you can copy it and then paste it, and then it'll be there. And that works. You can also have a point down and hold down shift, and what that'll do is that it will not change this vertical value, but it will allow you to move it horizontally. Now, the line types primarily consist of the single curve, which is what we're using most of the time. You can grab the center and change the tension, of the line, like Sue. So. We have uh, various other options, like versions of the single curves. These are actually new with FL12, these different uh, line type options, which are kind of cool. We have Dubla Curve for all your up down knees. I'm blind. I apologize. We. That's just weird. Half sign which is good for creating real smooth stuff. It's also the smooth like line there, which actually is specifically smooths out stuff. And if you're using all that with all that, it works out. And the hold where it creates a sharp point wherever your point is. Stairs, which are neat. Which are snake stairs. And smooth stairs are the same thing, only they're more, more curvy. We have pulse, which creates a dense pulsy waveform. Which could be awesome and devastating to use at the same time. And then the wave type, which is pretty similar, where on one side it's the sine wave type, and on the other side it's the triangle wave type. 
And those are the line types. Now, with the copy value and paste value, what's kind of neat is that this is actually just a regular number-based thing. So if I actually copied this and had a notepad open and hit paste, there's actually a value there. Now, if I type in a value like 0 0.45, so 45%, I can actually copy that, come in here, and paste that. It's a value from 0 to 1, which is, say, 0% and 100%. So, uh, so that 0.45 there was translated being 0.45%, which is good because your movement of your of your hands here, if you look up here, it'll give you the specific value that you're at. Well, your hands are not that accurate. Not only that, but the actual position itself is not perfectly accurate. It's not literally, like, sometimes it's not actually exactly 76%. Sometimes it's something else. Like that. But you want it to be exactly 76%. You can just do this, type it in, copy it, paste it, and now it's exact. This is helpful for when you want particular things. I actually just came up with someone wanted wanted to know if how can they do uh, ranges for things for when they have something like an EQ. What you can do is you can find, figure out what your position is. Just be like, I want it to be right there. And you can copy that value. And you can paste the value. And it'll be in there. There's actually a parameter there I didn't recognize. What does set give us? Well, that's 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 redundant. Yes, and some of these also have type in values. We're able to do what we're doing just now, but manually. So that's about that. Now, what, what, do I mean, what do I mean by ranges? Actually, in the uh, automation clip, we're able to actually calibrate the minimum and maximum settings for the automation clip itself. So, for example, let's say that, like, in the entire automation clip, I wanted to have all of them be, like, only up here. So, it's, like, it's everything is 50% and up kind of thing. I could either do what I just did there and move it all up there, or I could set the whole thing itself to be the minimum value is 50%, which means that now, no matter what the automation clip is doing, it will never actually allow the parameter to go below 50%. <laughs> as opposed to the entire range of 0 to 100%. We can come down the max as well to have a very narrow range indeed. And we can even completely invert it by making the maximum be the minimum value and the minimum being the maximum value. And I was doing the opposite of what I was doing before. So you have that option. And that's a lot of fun. And there's time stretch mode. That is kind of awesome because that wasn't there before. I really hope that wasn't there before because damn, that's cool. What does that button do? This is, okay, so here's all the, uh, these are all the line editor options that are typically present in other rest of the line editor options. Uh, these are things like you can copy, you can copy the state, uh, you can save the state as well. Um, it's up in here somewhere. Yeah, save channel state, you can save that as being a thing. And here's the thing like it'll flip, flip vertically, scale levels, and these are all tools for changing uh, the le level the level values and positions of things that we've got already written in there. And like I said, uh, because this is a, a line editor in FL, everything that we're doing in here is possible to be done in every other line editor present in FL. It's also normalized levels. It's already normalized. It's just to say that everything is, it reaches its maximum value of the, of the whole point. Decimate points, where it'll, or it'll, get, it'll remove some points, but there's not enough points to really remove. Uh, this filter where it gets smoother like that. And it's smooth up. Smooth, I think, abrupt changes. So smooth the abrupt changes. It's actually kind of cool that it does that. Turn all points smooth. <laughs> and there's create sequence. So there, this whole thing is an interface unto itself about a very particular things that it does that I personally never use, but it is actually a really neat thing. And it might actually have gotten a little bit better about what it does. Um, but its purpose in life is to create sequences, sequences of things. Which I guess I can't play while I'm doing it. But its whole point is that you're able to sort of create... This is actually a lot like uh, Massive's Performer, if you're used to using that. And this is something that you can use to really kind of nail in uh, particular shapes of things to really get it to behave the way that you want it to. Can also randomize it. 
that's a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff there. And it's analyze audio file where it'll actually create as you import an audio file, it'll create um, it'll essentially take the transients and import that as data into uh, the, the thing itself, which like I said, every other line editor can do. Which for some things is actually really cool. But this time stretch thing is actually really awesome. There's actually a lot of applications for the, for thing for this that I could have used a lot if I knew that it was there. So I'm really happy that I learned about that. And I hope that you're happy that that's there too. So there are a lot of automation tools and pretty much all of them re revolve around the idea of the automation clips. And for the most part, the automation clips are really all that you need. There are more, there are other options. There are much more advanced things you could be doing with like with the peak, the peak controller, that whole thing. There's also event editing and that whole business for when you're recording uh, MIDI input and that kind of thing. You could also transfer event edits to automation clips. And there are also other other kinds of internal controllers that can be linked to stuff. But for the time being, that should be enough. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions about this, let me know. D -d -d Ding, Facebook, and follow me on Facebook. And as usual, have a nice day.